After standing on the shores of Troas and receiving the Macedonian call, Paul left what is modern day Turkey today and traveled over the Mediterranean Sea, landing here in the port city of Kavala. This was the first time he had stepped foot in the continent of Europe and Europe would never be the same again. He planted seeds that led to the growth of the Christian church and it still continues here to this day. This was during Paul's second missionary journey and after landing here, he traveled the 10 miles inland to the town of Philippi, some of it along the Via Ignatia. It seems that the city of Philippi did not have a synagogue. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 16 that on the Sabbath day, they went out of the city and came to the riverside and met with the women who gathered there. One of the women was called Lydia and she came from the city of Thyatira. The Bible says that she was a businesswoman, a seller of purple cloth. She readily accepted the message and along with her household was converted and baptized and asked the apostles to make her house their home. Here, about half a mile out of the city of Philippi, by the riverside is the traditional spot where she was converted. There was another woman who showed interest in Paul and Silas' work, but unfortunately, it was not for the same reason. She was possessed with an evil spirit and followed them around, distracting people from the good work that they were doing. Eventually, Paul cast out the evil spirit from her and she was restored to her right mind, but her masters were not happy. They received good money from her soothsaying and with this stream of income now taken away, they turned their anger on Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas were brought before the city rulers and accused of causing trouble in the city. They were whipped, they were beaten, and then they were thrown into jail. Here in ancient Philippi, they were imprisoned. They were put in uncomfortable stocks, but despite this injustice and cruel treatment, they were singing hymns and praising God. Then at midnight, an earthquake shook the foundations of the prison. The doors were opened and their chains were loosed. This is the traditional site of Paul's prison. The jailer was awoken by the earthquake in the middle of the night and seeing the prison doors open and assuming the prisoners had fled along with the newly imprisoned Paul and Silas and fearing the shame of a public execution, he was about to kill himself when Paul cried out, don't harm yourself, we are all here. Not just Paul and Silas, but all the prisoners had no doubt been persuaded by Paul to stick around. The jailer had never seen anything like this. Prisoners who could have escaped, but chose not to, and he fell down in front of them and said, what must I do to be saved? He was told to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and he would be saved. The Bible says that he and his family were baptized. The next day, Paul and Silas were released from prison and after going to Lydia's house to see the other believers, they left soon after. Paul's labor here resulted in the establishment of a church. After seeing Paul's zeal and dedication and his willingness to suffer for the cause of Christ, it left a lasting impression on the converts. The journey of this church would not be a smooth one, as evidenced by Paul's letter to the Philippians in chapter 1, verse 29, where he says, Unto you it is given on behalf of Christ to not only believe on him, but to also suffer for his sake. And so today with some of us, the path is not always smooth and easy. And like Paul here in Philippi, we may be called to suffer for the cause of Christ. If that is your lot in life, then may we rejoice in the midst of the struggle as Paul and Silas did. And remember that as it says in 2 Corinthians 13 verse 8, you can do nothing against the truth but for it.